All right, so you came back. So this is part two. What I would like to do is talk about some colors and the fonts for the website. So that's really important. All right, so when you think about colors, let me just go moving myself out of the way. That's the only problem. I, I like, you know, I think sometimes it helps to see my face, um, but I get in the way. So this is right from Canva. We're going to be talking about Canva because I honestly think they can help you. A lot. You know, that website can help you a lot. It's free. I have a paid version. Um, but there's a free version as well, and we're going to go through that in the next video. All right, let's think about colors of your website. Do you like reds? You know, there's this whole psychology about colors, so it's just important that you know, especially if you're going to be designing other people's website or your own website. Red is usually danger, passion, excitement, and energy. Um, if you like orange, that has to do with fresh and youthful. Think about it like the um, oranges and, and full of life, adventurous. Yellow is optimistic. I can tell you when you're scrolling and you see um, a lot of like the social media posts, they try to do yellow to get more attention. It's been shown to grab attention more so than I believe any other color. So it's optimistic, playful, and happy. Think about like the sun. Green, natural vitality, prestige, wealth. So if you're thinking money website or perhaps a health website, um, you may want to think green. Blue, trustworthy, um, calming, so another color. Royal, purple, right? Royal, um, basically spiritual and mysterious. And then we have black and gray. Black could be like considered masculine once in a while. Um, it, it does come under here as being sophisticated though and, and even sorrowful. So you, those are the thoughts that people see when they see black. And then gray, um, innocence and minimalism, simplicity. So those are basically the colors and the thoughts. Now this is copyrighted. It is from 1911, uh, Stephanie Schwab. So I just wanted to point that out. But I thought that this was pretty neat. So when you think of purple, you're thinking a friendly, warm, and playful. Um, with green, thinking more honest and humble. With um, language, purple, um, you know, maybe simple and fun and whimsical. And then, you know, like a blue or a teal is delight and engage and amplify. So just some colors to, you know, I think kind of goes along with, you know, what we were discussing as far as colors. I do think that, you know, when you have colors, it's important. Now, something else you may want to consider. Tell me about the, um, you know, if it matters to you, like pinks and purples. I seem to do a lot of them on my website, but honestly... I've always geared myself to advertising to women, not men. So recently I've really taken a step back and I'm like, you know, if I want to advertise to men, because a lot of men, you know, create websites, do I need to change my colors? And, and the overall answer was, yes, I do need to change my colors. So just something to keep in mind, you know, depending on who you're going to be, um, who your target market is. All right, so let's go through some things here. Um, we need images, right? So I personally think the best is to have images that we, your own images. Um, and it should not just be of the product, it should be like the product in action. You know, it could be something like a face cream, but then, you know, maybe putting on the face cream or somebody smiling, and, you know, with the product itself, not just the product on the shelf. All right. So that's something to keep in mind. I am going to, there's a couple of um, apps on the phone that you should be familiar with. There's Over, O-V-E-R, and there's also... Um, no, no, where is it on my phone? I'm going to have a hard time finding it on my phone. But um, there's Snapseed. That's that's the name of it, is Snapseed. So there's two, picks, um, Over and Sna Snapseed. I'll do a video on those. I think that I already have one. I'll just link it so that you guys can see how they work. They're really great as far as taking images and adding text and adding different lighting. Um, so they're two great apps for your phone that you could really change images. Say for instance, you have an image, but you're not really happy with it, with the lighting or whatnot. So many different ways you can, um, you know, to, that you can make it better until you're able to get a nice um, image. All right, so let's take a look, Pixabay. Let's just say for instance, we are dog groomers. All right, so these are all the images that come up with dog. This is Shutterstock. These are paid images, okay? So you can also go to Shutterstock. But these are all the images with dogs. And what's important to know is that you can basically take any of these. Let's just say, for instance, this one. Move myself out of the way again. Just make sure you look at the side. It's free for commercial use, which is on your website would be commercial, right? It's not for personal use. And then you don't have to link back um, and then if you wanted to download it, you know, you would do an account. It's free. This is a free site. And then you could 
do different images. I think the small images you don't even need a web um, you don't even need to log in or sign in, but the larger ones you definitely do. So um, again, that site is Pixabay. So it's something you should mark down and take note of. Another site that we have is that I use is Unsplash. Um, you know what? Let me go back to Pixabay for a second. Say for instance. Um, in the search, I just want to show you because this is a little different. Maybe Unsplash has this, but I wasn't able to find it. So you could go through popular Im images. You could look at the different types of images that they have. There's photos. There's vectors. So say, for instance, you know, we want to do um, a cartoon. These would be all the ones for dogs. We could use um, illustrations, right? You know, like like illustrations. People like. Um, it's basically illustrated. A little different than vectors. Vectors are, um, they're usually PNGs. And so that makes it nice for a transparent image. Let's just see. Let me show you. And you'll know that it's a transparent image because the background when you do it is going to be this um, like checkered box, I guess you call it. So that's really nice as far as like if you wanted to use this in your logo, I'm not so sure that you would or whatever. But the bottom line is you could make um, do a logo in Canva, which we'll talk about, and then just add font next to it, and that would be your logo. It's really simple, but it helps to have transparent background. So you, if you wanted to kind of do an overlay, like say you had a video or an image and you didn't want like a white, like white behind the dog, um, it would just be an overlay and you would see the image right through the, the dog, if that makes sense. Hope so. All right, Unsplash. Um, I like Unsplash. It's I don't think it has as many, and maybe it's just because I'm not using it correctly. Don't know if it has as many options. But what I do love about them is that they their images seem to be like warmer, I think, and and more colorful. I'm not, at least this is my personal opinion. But take a look at Unsplash. Right, these are pictures of dogs. So again, if you know you wanted to use these for your website, you can do it. Just make sure that there's no. Um, that you don't have to do like um, reference back, okay? Because that's kind of a hassle on a website. On a video, like if you were doing a YouTube video, not a problem, social media post, not a problem. You just link back, but on a website, it makes it harder. Okay, let's talk about fonts. So you have your colors chosen, right? You, you kind of have like, okay, I want to work with greens and yellows or pinks and purples, whatever you want to do. Before you even put like kind of pen to paper, you want to know what the message is. We spoke about that in the first video. You want to know your colors for the website because you don't want to be jumping all around. Pick two or three colors, four at max. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you that in the next video as far as working with Canva and how you could um, take your branding colors and then all the graphics and all would use those same colors. And then um, fonts. Fonts are really important. Now, don't go crazy on this. You better, I personally think that simplicity is really important. Remember, we spoke about how important it is to be very clear. I love fancy fonts, but sometimes they're difficult. Not sometimes, a lot of times they're difficult to read. So let's take a look. This is an article by Canva. It's in their blog, and I can certainly link it below in the comments. Um, and also what I could do is put everything together. If you guys want this emailed out to you, I can certainly do that as well. But, um, okay, so the anatomy of, this is basically typography, right? That's like the text written out. There's different styles, and we're going to get into some of these styles. See, there's like script and bolder, and then you could do half and half, depending on, like, again, this is your preference. But remember, always try to keep it simple, easy to read. So these are, it's a great article to go through because it will give you some ideas as far as, you know, using combination of fonts. Usually when you look at a website, there's at least two fonts, if not three fonts, right? There's going to be the title, the subtitle, and then, um, you know, the, the text for, the, like, in the paragraphs or whatnot. These are considered, like, header one, header two, and then um, that would be, like, paragraph. So that's League Spartan. And you know what's nice about this article is that, you know, it's different than just seeing League Spartan and Baskerville here compared to actually seeing it in use. And that's what I was talking about before, how important it is on a website, not just to show a product. You're not just selling a, sh a chair. You're selling a chair with a table and in a room and it's all like, you know, you get the whole picture there. It's not just selling one thing. So always keep that in mind. That's why images are so very important. And a lot of us, you know, are very creative and we can see, but others of us can't. So here it is, those fonts in, in, um, in use. And then here's like ones that you would use for resumes, like Julius, um, 
you know, it's not just frozen beans, you could use them on your website as well if you like this font. So do me a favor, take a look at this article, sports, very bold, you know, it's um, there's another font called Impact you may want to take a look at. But they're good as far as, you know, how how are you able to pair fonts? Because a lot of us, if we don't have a creative background, if we have no formal training in this, it may be difficult for us to see, you know, which fonts go where. And, you know, you could have a beautiful website, like a beautiful layout, but if the fonts don't match, it does throw it off. And that's why images are so important, layouts and the fonts. And that's why, I mean... I know you guys want to get into how do I do a website. This is all really important though. And you probably just need two or three different combinations. And once you got that figured out, just keep on reusing them because you know that they work. This is, um, you know, for eBooks, but again, this could be used on your website. It's different Libris, they call it. I'm not even um, probably pronouncing this right, but you see like how it looks very nice, I think. Um, and again, you know, image is everything, text is everything. But if you had that big, bold impact, it, it will give a total different feel to the um, to the website or in this case the image because it's a softer font. It looks softer, right? Fashion. So I don't have to go much further than this. You guys, if you're interested in knowing about fonts, I will link this article. I think it's really important. And again, if you want this emailed out to you, I definitely will do that. So there's those fonts, you know, being used. And again, it's, it's a nice combination, right? I, I think. Maybe I'll just go a little bit further. What I, I'm going to scroll pretty fast here. Sometimes the fonts are very squished together, and I think those are hard to read. Again, nice fonts, right? So let me see if I can see an example of this. Um, again, remember, it all has to do with being very clear and being able to, to read and, and not being like, you know, what are they trying to say, and I can't figure this out. And those fonts, those types of sites, really don't, they don't get a lot of traction. And so I can't really see an example of what I'm thinking of. Um, but sometimes when you're looking at it and you'll see, just think about like Yellowtail. I like scripts a lot, but it's harder to read than this open sans bold, right? So it's a problem with fonts. I try to use fonts, um, the script cursive, I guess you would call it limited because it's harder to read. It takes, you know, a, a couple more seconds for people to read usually. So, um, this is kind of nice, right? It's a nice, this is called, I, I guess, let's see, that's the yellow tail, but it looks nice on here with the, the, the different colors, right? With the darker color and then the lighter background, definitely easier to read. So for a script, that may be one that you want to consider because yes, it's scripted live. It's a little different than just doing like a classic font, but at the same time, it's easy to read. So that's pretty much it for this section. All right. So we spoke about colors, right? We spoke about fonts. You know, um, I'm going to show you where to get the fonts in the next video. We're going to be speaking about Canva. So again, you know the drill. It will go on to the next video. You may have to refresh this page. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.